I'm going to give a brief demonstration of uh, how I configure Roll20 to play uh, Star Trek Adventures for our current game, uh, Star Trek Where No Man Has Gone Before. This is a game set in the year 2269, which would be the last year of the Enterprise's uh, five-year mission. Um, set aboard uh, one of her sister ships, the heavy cruiser USS Yorktown, and uh, she's going out near the Shackleton Expanse, which is in the Beta Quadrant on the far side of the Klingon Empire, so... Uh, she's configured for a very long-range uh, extended uh, survey mission. So this is my landing page. It's got a simple diagram of the Yorktown. And uh, a lot of the action is going to take place uh, on our main, main bridge set. And you can see here, here's my main bridge. Uh, I've used these uh, uh, tiles that I was able to get uh, online. Uh, these are also available in Roll20. Uh, the, I'll post uh, in the link the uh, the supplier. They're, they're great tiles for the 60s Federation cruiser type, uh, very much reminiscent of the Enterprise Bridge. Um, some of the characters on here, you can see the captain. Um, you can see uh, what I like to do is I've actually gone and made animated blinky lights for all the, uh, all the uh, panels. So it gives it a certain amount of depth and reality under the theory of uh, show don't tell right so uh, uh, I just think it gives it a little life um, and these are all you can see functioning in the various stations and some of the characters are here some of our NPCs uh, I can also add uh, you know, my view screen noises uh, for example there we go um, so, you know, this is uh, where a lot of plot will take place. I've got some other, I like to call them sets uh, on this page. Uh, one is my view screen. You can see here's the, uh, the uh, classic Star Trek uh, Enterprise view screen. The ship's moving uh, at a pretty good uh, pace at warp. Uh, of course, we can go to red alert. Uh, yeah, we can uh, call in on the intercoms. Um, you know, various other things. We can run Spock's viewer, you know, uh, etc. Right. So there's a lot of sound effects you can add there. You can also add effects uh, onto the view screen itself. Uh, for example, I might go uh, if I wanted to put a uh, a Klingon cruiser on there. I might um, come down and find a uh, appropriate picture. I can drag it onto the screen, and then there it is. Uh, that doesn't work as well uh, on this screen, but I've got some black ones that it works pretty well on. Uh, I can also uh, kind of do some cool things. Um, for example, if I want, I can uh, remove this screen. And, uh, hey, the ship's in a wormhole. <laughs> so yeah, there's various uh, effects you can do um, uh, with the main viewer. Uh, the last thing I have uh, on here is uh, the bridge panel. Um, these are the overhead panels you'd see on the, in the series. They're located kind of up in these areas, you know, science and communications and whatnot. And again, under the theory of show, don't tell, uh, I've uh, included uh, panels. This is showing some warp engine status, and I can display different things on here that are related to the game. Like for here, we're leaving this outpost and heading to this planet, and you can you know, zoom in on these if you want. We're going to Durap 4 near the Klingon. Uh, border before heading out into unexplored territory. So, um, a lot of action can take place here, and there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, this bridge, uh, one difference from the Constitution sets properly is that uh, uh, you can see uh, the elevators directly in the back rather than off to the side. Uh, these are the character tokens I use. Uh, I'll post their links as well. Um, I got security officers, and these are actually connected to the character sheets as well. So, here's the captain and uh, I can actually click here and uh, you know see his, his various uh, his various uh, options. Uh, I can also go up to the actual character sheets and click on the captain. And he'll, he'll pop out. Uh, I'll get his character sheet here. Um, these will also pop out. I usually dual screen when I play so you can see here's Captain Foster and his various skills and focuses, talents, whatnot, the die rollers. 
Um, the one thing I do want to do eventually is all the sheets for the characters are all got a next gen look. I'd like to make my own TOS sheets so that the, I can have that look. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to do that. Um, that would give it kind of a consistent look. I also have uh, a series of uh, you know sound effects um, and music. Um, so you know, if I want to do uh, you know, uh, say the, the well, I'll show you the warp drive here in a moment. But if I want to uh, use some musical cues, you know, I've got uh, you know maybe a way to start the series. You know, I might start a gaming session off. Well, players are kind of kibitzing and logging in. I can kind of play some kind of classic startup music, you know. Uh, something to, to get people in the mood. And I think, again, the secret is the see and hear, don't uh, tell, right? Show, don't tell, hear, don't tell. So you can do that. Um, I even got the little uh, suspense things, you know. And we can turn the, the bridge view screen off for a moment. But, uh, and the various things that, you know, would, would cut for episodes, you know, I can do those. Good stuff. And, of course, you know, when you end the episode, they usually end it on a bit of a, a jovial note. So we can end uh, appropriately as well before segueing into the end music. Um it's a little bit of work, but I think these really add a lot to the player experience. And I do have other sets, as I like to call them. I tend to think of it as you're directing a, directing a series, right? So uh, you can do, for example, I have main engineering. And this is supposed to be representative rather than, you know, necessarily hull accurate. But you can see uh, here, uh, you know, here's the engineering set. And uh, you can see... Let me reload this here because we're there. We go. Um, get all the blinkies working. Uh, you can see I've got the kind of throbbing uh, red tunnel that was in the back of the engineering room. Various crew. You can see the instruments are working. Engine panels. Here's our chief engineer. Um, and you can you know, zoom in, zoom out. These are big sets, so. Uh, you have to zoom in kind of tight, but this is kind of what I use for the engine room. Um, one thing everyone gets a laugh at is where are the bathrooms on the Enterprise? Well, I actually have one. <laughs> so there's there's a bathroom. Um, and these tiles are really great. I can't recommend them enough. Um, these are some of the uh, the engine room sets here. Blow these out a little bit. Um, they all should be look familiar from the show. And I kind of double-ended it this way. Uh, this is storage. This here is an engineer's office. Um, we have uh, here, we have the computer core, a transporter room. I'm going to add a transporter shimmer effect on there, which I think will be fine for when people beam out. Um, I also have, uh, uh, you know, the turbo elevators. These are the Jeffries tubes, and you can even add some kind of neat effects, too. Um, if you want, you can, uh, uh, say, take these uh, engine shimmers here, and we can copy them. And uh, paste them, and then um, probably rotate them. I think it is. Uh, let me see. Advanced. I'll um, I'll have to look, but you can rotate them, and I can put you know like if I want to have uh, maybe there's a uh, some some plasma problems in here or something. I can uh, put things in here that, that shimmer and glow, you know, I can do like electrical sparks or whatever, but these are the Jeffries tubes, right? More kind of engineering controls, the ship's batteries, for example. Um, not quite sure what this is. Uh, I, 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 it looks like to me, it's kind of a technical library. So I don't know, maybe that's uh, where the enterprise keeps its, uh, its pubs. I don't know, but, uh, or the, the Yorktown as the case may be. So that's my engineering deck. And you can see it's also divided into sections for the the combat system, and these are good for your, your bottle episodes that are going to take place on the ship. Um, one thing that's kind of fun is, of course, you have to have the right uh, engine room noises. So, you know, we actually have, uh, you know, kind of the classic, uh, uh, 
warp engine noise. Uh, the Enterprise, when she'd go to warp uh, in the original series, uh, rather than that kind of whoosh and bang, you'd get the uh, uh, you know warp acceleration, so you can actually do that here. And uh, you know the the classic uh, malfunctioning warp drive here. So, you know our engineers don't want to hear this during the course of an adventure, I'm sure. But uh, these are all things that will help. And, uh, you know, we can get garbled messages uh, coming down, you know. or you know we can call the captain <laughs> up on the old uh, uh, intercom and say, "Hey, you know, bridge, we're giving her all she's got." <laughs> so. Uh, I think these are all, again, things that just help the experience, so uh, pretty easy to do. Um, moving on, uh, I have a, a crew quarters in sick bay uh, set up as well. Um, there's not as much here, um, but uh, you can see here, this is, again, the sick bay. The uh, greebles here, they've got their little blinky lights and flashes, and uh, you can see them quite clearly. You can also see uh, more controls, ship's batteries here. Oops. Um, uh, these little things here are kind of the TOS version of replicators. They're synthesizers. They're used to help manufacture equipment. And we got lounges, crew quarters, uh, you know, things like that. Um, here's a, a, a fairly, you know, officer's kind of, kind of Kirk type quarter, you know, uh, senior officer's quarter. Here's a junior officer's quarter. So I, I don't have a enlisted quarters, um, which is uh, something you may or may not have, but uh, uh, I think you know, one could be built out of there. So the, this is kind of my uh, engineering and, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, my uh, sick bay and uh, uh, crew quarters deck. Um, I'm going to build some more decks eventually. I'm going to build a uh, auxiliary control, uh, a hangar deck, a storage deck, and probably uh, more crew quarters and lounges. So maybe a science deck, I don't know. Um, there's quite a few out there and quite a few combinations that can be used. And again, you know, if you're having something that's taking place in sick bay, you can uh, you can always add you know the appropriate uh, the appropriate music or the appropriate sound effects just by scrolling down there and you know throwing it in there. You know, in terms of, oh, yeah, well, he's, he's got Regellian fever, sir, or whatever, you know. Um, and, you know, there's some other cool effects. If you want to do uh, computer research to try to figure out what the disease is, you can engage the computer, you know. Um, these are all sampled from the series. They're easy to find online and, and download, so. Uh, anyway, so that's my, my major decks. Let's turn these off now. Okay. Um, these are my major decks, and I'm going to build some more. I've got a couple other things I've made. Uh, uh, again, this is the tricorder. Um, I don't think I have anything on it right now. We can look. But yeah, here's here's the tricorder configured as a medical tricorder. Um, I've actually got some blinky lights uh, here, I think. Yeah, it looks like uh, they've moved a little, so we can go into... Uh, the map layer, grab, we can unlock it. All right, put this in the right place. That's kind of how some of this works. And then for the animation, we can play it. So then you can actually be in a position uh, to use this. You can add the sound effects again. So if I need a medical trans. Or a tricorder or a science tricorder. Rather than explain it, I can actually paste art and even live art onto it to uh, show the players what's going what's going on. So that's the tricorder. Um, I have the uh, little desk computers uh, that people had, and you can see these here. Uh, and these also will scroll information as well. Um, there we go. You can see right here. It'll it's going to just go through random information. But again. If someone's in their quarters or in the conference room, I can put information up here to show them rather than uh, just explain to them. Um, then I also uh, recreated the main viewer as a standalone. Here's the uh, the more quiet star field. And uh, again, I have the station view as well. So all these things together, I think, uh, can make a very effective experience. Um, the only other thing I've really made for this is um, I've got a star map for ship combat. You can see here's New Yorktown. 
um, with a, uh, an area map uh, that's used for ship combat or, or other ship-related maneuvers. Um, I've got our star map uh, of the area of space we're in, which is, again, got that kind of TOS look to it. So I've got that. Um, you know, the characters are all over here. I think, you know, I'm not really going to explain how to use Roll20, but to give you an idea of how you can use Roll20 to craft a game that, that imparts some liveliness uh, other than just maps. Um, when you're playing in a uh, digital environment, um, there's minuses of not being with people, necessarily be able to see their faces or read their, their responses. Um, you can't use miniatures, but by using some of these things, you can do things you couldn't do if you were in person to kind of give it life. Um, one last thing that I like to do uh, is... Uh, is uh, usually record a, uh, a, a series intro and uh, uh, I make my own kind of opening and closing credits and uh, I'll use you know videos that are available I'll, I'll poach videos off the internet or whatever of, of the ship or whatever I'll make my own opening credits and, um, uh, and keeping kind of in theme with you know Star Trek in the 60s actually you know for the credits go through and I'll cast actors for the NPCs so I actually did a search, for example, of 60s character actors. And those are those people that you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of saw that guy in Gunsmoke, and I saw him in this, and he was the villain number two or whatever, you know. Um, I think that gives it some life, especially if you're, you're old enough to remember watching these things in reruns, um, you know, after school or whatever, or, God forbid, <laughs> live. Um, but uh, the idea is that uh, uh, it gives it a certain amount of life, like, hey, you know, this is a, uh, not just a simulation it's kind of um galaxy quest ish it's a simulation of a tv show so uh you know something to keep in mind and, and one of the reasons i like doing original trek so i hope uh maybe this was helpful and uh gave people some ideas and um and good luck in your games thanks